All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you from San Diego as usual. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Steve Rogers, who is literally down the road from me here also in San Diego. How are you doing, Steve? I am excellent, John. Thank you. Yeah, we are blessed to be in San Diego. No doubt about that. Yeah, and, and uh, Steve is a purpose-driven consulting coach, board advisor, and speaker. And what we're going to talk about today is a really interesting topic because we often talk about uh, you know, IQ and then we talk about EQ and all of these things. What we're going to talk about today is how to grow a business and have more effective sales while adding spiritual intelligence. So this is a new one for probably for most of us and, and for me. So I'm really excited to hear about this, uh, Steve. So, you know, let's get, let's get right down to a baseline. When you talk about spiritual intelligence, what do you mean? Yeah, and I think, thank you for bringing up the IQ and EQ and even AI now, artificial intelligence yeah. is such a massive discussion. But I guess if we're using that artificial intelligence or the spiritual intelligence, um, think about it in a way of, we don't always see what our Wi-Fi signal looks like, but we know it works. So whatever our Wi-Fi signal is, it's connecting our iPad or iPhone device to some higher energy that's tapping into knowledge or expertise that we can then get a phone signal or an email or a Facebook post because of this energy that's flowing around. Think about that then in a spiritual essence. So outside of our daily life of our being, our body, our mind, our energy, in my uh, research and exploration and uh, living, I realize that there's energy outside of us and I call that spirituality. I also call that God. Uh, so I do use the God word. People don't have to use the God word. You can call it mother nature or energy or you know, Jesus or Buddha or whatever it might be. Right. But it's basically anything that is a power outside of yourself that you believe has higher intelligence that makes the uh, tides go in and out and the sun come up and down and whatever that energy is. It's the intelligence of that working every day with or without us involved in it. And how do you tap into that energy in your own definition and pull that into your daily thinking, your daily actions, your daily progress, and in your daily business, since our business is so much of what we do. Uh, so to me, spiritual intelligence is basically strengthening your own Wi-Fi signal with your own higher power of your own description. And it's funny because, I mean, I think we, we live in a world where, unfortunately, like people are very self-consumed in many ways and that we do tend to look inwards a lot or focus inwards. Uh, so what, what difference does it make when you start to, as you're talking about who you focus outwards and you focus on a higher power, regardless of what that means to you in particular? But what does that, what does that change in you? Well, what I have found, whether it's business leaders, entrepreneurs, thought leaders, athletes, whatever it might be, musicians, most people through that process are seeking to experience their highest and best self, whether they're pushing themselves athletically or they're pushing themselves in business sales as they're trying to get to certain quotas or numbers, or they're trying to get their companies to certain profits. It's because we have this internal drive in ourselves to do more, be more, and to live to our full authentic self. That's what drive is all about. That's what entrepreneurship and creativity is all about. And the reason I think spirituality is so important in that it's because I have seen uh, on my own path and in the food chain of climbing corporate America, I became the CEO of a Warren Buffett company. Mm -hmm. I was an entrepreneur rent. So all of those spaces had people that had lots of money, lots of uh, toys, lots of wealth, and not all, always happiness, not mm -hmm. always joy, not always fulfillment. And what I have found is that we still need to have this quest for this profitable side of our business or doing things in a, in a creative way. But I think what's lacking is either the expression of it often or deep enough, or even the exploration of it in general. And what I find when I speak to people over the years, um, either just in general or in my consulting practice, is some people say, I thought there'd be more. I thought it was going right. to feel different. I thought I would get more when I became the CEO or when I started my company or when I first made my first million or when my app got on, on iTunes, whatever it might be. I thought it would feel different or more. And I think it's because we have this elusiveness that we're always following. And the only thing in my view uh, that can fill that at a deep level for more joy, more happiness, more peace, more fulfillment and less stress is a spiritual connection of some practice. Yeah. And I think it's interesting just to, to focus in on, the, on what you just said there about when people, you know, get to where they think they wanted to go and they get there and then it's not as fulfilling as they thought it would be. 
And, and I think sometimes that also comes from the fact that people sort of have a vague idea of where they want to go, but they haven't really defined what, what the destination looks like and what will it mean when they get there and what do I hope and what do I intend to feel like when I achieve this. Right, right. Well, and a lot of time we're on that quest, we're doing it from an ego standpoint, even though it might be something that's better in the world. And uh, part of this, uh, uh, this new book that I wrote is called The Iggy Principles. Mm -hmm. It's the opposite of what Wayne Dyer used to talk about. And Wayne Dyer has since passed, but Wayne was a great spiritual writer and uh, originally yeah. a psychologist and therapist. But he, uh, you know, he, he was the PBS master of promoting thoughts and ideas. And mm -hmm. one of the things he talked a lot about was ego. And that we all have ego as our human condition. It's just part of who we are. We'll never not have it. And it can be very healthy. But when you're deeply in your ego day after day, week after week, you are in edging good out, or in some mm -hmm. cases, edging God out. And I thought that was so powerful in how he spoke about that. So I said, how can I constantly remind myself of staying out of my ego whenever possible? And that would be the opposite, which is inviting good in or inviting mm -hmm. God in. So I have a daily mantra that I've done as I'm making decisions or I'm deciding who to spend time with or I'm deciding where to put my money or I'm deciding what uh, clients to work with. Am I inviting good in or God in in that decision or am I edging it out? And so this, this practice of having this quest of then not doing it for just ego, but then when you get into the inviting good in, you start getting into doing service of others. And we've heard a lot about servant leadership. And I think mm -hmm. that what I have found of these top leaders or executives or men or women or top entrepreneurs is they get to a certain point and then they realize, is this all there is until they start giving back more? They start being of mm -hmm. more service. They start contributing to others. And that's where that void starts getting filled. Yeah, no, I love that idea. And, and the book that uh, Steve is referring to is his uh, book, The Iggy Principles or The Power of Inviting Good In. And as you just said, uh, Iggy stands for inviting good or, or God in. So um, what I like about what you outlined there, uh, outlined there, Steve, is, is again, it's when you start to focus outside of yourself and you start to look at um, you know, from a sales or business point of view, like how can I help? My, how can I help a prospect solve a problem? How can how can my business serve you to make your business better? Um, how can I you know give advice, provide advice? How can I provide value in in multiple different ways? I think when you start to focus out on those things and focus less on on you know internally on yourself, it's it's very liberating in many ways. It is. And it's, you know, we all have this need to have food, shelter, and clothing, of course. I mean, sure. we have to have our, you know, our, our, our necessities to live. Uh, and in that, we then, once we have those things, we can start realizing, okay, what do I want to have that's like fulfillment or, or luxury or discretionary spending or discretionary time or how I'm serving others? And what I have found is the more that's integrated quicker, faster, and more in our businesses, our practices, our mission statements, um, and the things that we do, like that, even POP, I was like, well, what does POP stand for? And as I started researching on your site, you know, that's the purveyors of prosperity. And I thought, wow, that's an Iggy principle. I mean, if you're a purveyor of prosperity, prosperity is more than just about money. I mean, that's about yeah. happiness and joy and giving and goodness and abundance and giving back. So, you know, your whole slogan that you have in your organization is completely all about that. And so many of us in our world get caught up in the status and what I can get and what I can achieve and how can I get more. And that's part of being a good salesperson. I mean, we're, mm -hmm. we're given awards and plaques and trips to Hawaii if we're that top, top, top salesperson. And that does take drive and ego. But there are yeah. people that have learned to do that for the quest of serving someone else and serving more people. Uh, it's like when I used to work at you know, uh, Prudential California Realty, which was the company Warren Buffett bought. We were selling right. at our peak 35,000 houses a year. And instead of saying we were selling those houses, we started shifting and saying we served 35,000 people or families to help them find a better way mm -hmm. to live. And so we shifted our thinking about that. Yes, that was true. Yes, we did close and sell and make commissions on 35,000 houses in a year. But just think of all the lives we helped affect or change in that process. So it's just a matter of shifting your thinking of spiritual intelligence around what you're doing and still having equal or better results. Yeah, and, and, and again, I think that's a wonderful point, Steve, because again, it's a, sm it's, it's a relatively small tweak, you know, a simple tweak to look at, but it's, it's so powerful. And I was to say, um, simple doesn't equate to easy, by the way, but it's a simple tweak to look at it differently and suddenly, uh, and, and suddenly it's a very powerful thing. As you said, you are putting families in homes. You're not selling houses, you're 
you're helping families and people, you know, find somewhere to live. Same thing with with salespeople. We you know, we say that, um, you know, trade is essential, and salespeople are the conduits of trade. They're the people who make trade happen. And when trade works equitably between countries, you have peace. So salespeople are peace producers at their essence as well. So I think again, when you re re reorient your your thinking. I think and people look at sales in a different way to say actually it is a force for good in society yeah and the force for good is what i find gives people additional fuel in the fuel tank because we got we all get exhausted by the world i mean especially mm -hmm. in the last this last year of 2020 not only do we have our normal life that we're already at capacity for with work and income mm -hmm. and family and status and and uh and enjoying life at a certain level then we have coronavirus added on top of that of being sequestered and then we have you know, unprecedented elections and the stress and power of that externally makes you sometimes just want to have your head explode. So if you're not realizing what is the good in this and how can I serve and find peace and harmony and joy by realizing what I'm doing in some small or big way is serving others and I'm bettering the world in the way I can better the world, even though I can't always control the rest of the world. What I can control is how I show up, how I give, how I interact with others, how I um, try and find ways to create a miracle in someone else's life that day. You know, and, it, and it's sometimes that bubble of that experience is the additional juice or energy you need to not get on burnout and to not get on uh, a callous, um, sarcastic kind of mindset that we all sometimes get into because it does sometimes feel like a, a rat race in just another day. But if you're looking as, you know, Einstein, you know, so eloquently said about, you know, you can either look at, at, at something that nothing's a miracle or everything is a miracle. And when you shift your mindset that just the matter that we get up in the morning and we breathe and we, you know, have bodies that function and we have minds that think and we have oceans that we can, you know, go get fish out of or swim, that in itself is a miracle beyond anything else before we even start our day. Uh, so mm -hmm. that's the kind of stuff when you start shifting and really looking at that, it does fuel this energy that sometimes we're lacking. Yeah, and and I think I think that's a, such a profound thing to say there about because yeah, I think people get too caught up in macro -ish, global issues a lot of the times and feel that uh, everything is outside of their control. Or alternatively, it feels good to talk about and pontificate about big global issues that you have absolutely no control over because that's always easy. You can talk about it because you can't really affect it. Um, whereas what you're talking about are the things that are completely within our control, like that idea of how you show up, you know, how you interact with other people. Those are things completely within your control. But guess what? They're not always easy things either. It's much easier sometimes to talk about the global issue than it is to slap yourself across the head and snap yourself out of whatever mood you happen to be in. Absolutely. Well, and it's, it, it's absolutely correct. I mean, it's sometimes staying in that wave too about being a pessimist or saying, oh, I can't mm -hmm. believe this or being that mm -hmm. armchair quarterback is easier than stopping and pausing and saying either A, I'm not going to contribute to that conversation because yeah. it's not going to feel anything or I have enough energy and conviction to, uh, to share in this conversation, even though it's contrary to what that person is saying because it's racist or because it's self-centered self or because it's mm -hmm. not serving the group or it's not serving our team and having the courage to realize you do in that situation have a chance to make a difference if you're coming at it from a place of love and giving and bettering the situation and not from ego trying to prove that you're right and they're wrong. So I think it, it allows us to use our voice and our thought and our energy in different ways. Um, and sometimes silence is the best thing. Uh, and sometimes it's not, you know, yeah. we, it, it, sometimes it does make sense to speak up. Sometimes it does make sense to make your voice heard. And other times silence is the most beautiful thing to have in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I think, uh, and I think to your point as well, I think uh, it's, uh, I do think if you focus around yourself and the sphere of influence you have, whether it's, whether it's within your family or community or whether it's in the prospects and customers that you're serving as a salesperson about how can you bring the, the most positive experience to that because positive experiences ripple out and affect other people and then transform situations far beyond what you'll ever know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, it's easy for us to talk in our companies about, I know you guys have an awesome CRM system and anything mm -hmm. you can track and measure, you can prove upon and anything you can communicate with people better. That's awesome. And that's great. And that becomes something that's very easy to understand about measuring, tracking, and, and having this system work. To me, spiritual intelligence plugging into a company or a conversation with people or your team 
is the same thing as if you're doing a business and budget plan that many people are starting now as you're coming into the end of the year and coming into 2021. And we talk about training and marketing and legal budgets mm -hmm. and prospecting and CRMs. And yes, we sometimes touch on culture. And yes, sometimes we talk about community service. But how could you adapt these kind of conversations in so they're, they're actually at the board table of the Zoom room, if you're in a Zoom room on weekly meetings, about having these conversations with your salespeople or your team about how they are making an impact in the world? How is the company making an impact in the world? What can we do this week to invite more good in? How can we help mm -hmm. Tommy who's struggling or Susie who's doing awesome, but her ego is a little out of control? What can we all do to acknowledge and be aware of that? And, and so having that part of your, your P&L and your balance sheet in a company sometimes is exactly what you need to have your company get to where it is, where it is to where you want it to go. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you because otherwise, I mean, a lot of these things tend to become, you know, the equivalent of corporate bumper stickers. Uh, but it's funny you should mention that actually, because what we were having a call earlier on before I came on here, um, we were having a, a sales a sales meeting here and we were going back. We have this, uh, approach to selling called network selling. But one of the elements of it is enjoyable. And we were actually having a discussion about that today. Say, you know, when you're normally engaged in a conversation around CRM and selling CRM, okay, it's not the most, it's not the most exciting subject in the world. It's a very necessary one, but not always the most exciting one. We said, what is it that we can do to make it a more enjoyable experience and conversation between us and, and prospects? Because at the end of the day, when people in, in maybe enjoy a process, surprisingly enjoy it, um, everybody wins. Absolutely. Well, I think about over the years as I have dealt with doctors, dentists, lawyers, mm -hmm. mechanics, restaurant workers, bartenders, uh, dog walkers, whatever it might be, <laughs> there's hundreds and thousands of those in all those fields. And I think about those that stand out that made it much more enjoyable or made the yeah. painful process of going to the dentist or to having my legal documents verified that they made it somehow enjoyable because they made it human. They yeah. made it compassionate. They made it fun. They made it uh, lighter, even though it might have been intense. So I think in all of our businesses, no you know, matter if we're brain surgeons or we're you know, teachers or we are doctors or we are you know, entrepreneurs online, all of those things have high, high value in the world. And I think all of those had an absolute key piece. But how can you do that in a way it's what, what you're saying about that creates more enjoyment and joy for others and for yourself that you're daring enough to realize that's part of the process, that that mm -hmm. is part of the mojo or the, the secret sauce, as they say, uh, or the, you know, people say, well, how do you know someone has charisma or how do they, how do you know if they have that it factor? Well, sometimes it's not that tangible, but it's just the yeah. awareness that that exists and within yourself or your business, how can you bring your own it factor, your own charisma, your own personality? And in my understanding of my own experience, is a lot of that's about your spiritual beliefs that we don't right. always let leak over into our business worlds because we think we should separate those. Now, by no means am I talking about standing on a stump and preaching your religious values and making that sure. you know, pounded into people's heads, but it's just the awareness of that general conversation of how you think about when you're at home or meditating or at church or temple or wherever you might be or walking on the beach or mother nature, how do you take that energy and still do your daily practice in a very high level way and both of those can be much more compatible than we allow them to be currently. Yeah, and I, and I think that's, again, that's such an incredibly important point because I do think, unfortunately, again, uh, we live in a society now where, you know, people are kind of reluctant to expose who they really are a lot of times or their authentic self. And I think that what you're talking about uh, here, I mean, in a positive way is, being a little bit more authentic and allowing the totality of yourself come come to the fore because i i think i think at the end of the day you know, people people react well to that even if they have a completely different view of the world than you do but when it comes from a, a place of authenticity and and as we said earlier not a, not in a proselytizing way or a or a preachy way or whatever when it just becomes this is this is kind of part of who i am and, and you're humble about it, I think that that sparks some kind of energy. Yeah, I agree. I think that humble word is key. Uh, and then curiosity. I mean, once you're authentic mm -hmm. enough to share your own beliefs in a way that are of service to them, that's trying to yeah. make the experience better, you're trying to find out more who they are, how you can help, how you can make it more fun. And then as you're having that exchange, your curiosity about their own life, their own family, their own beliefs, their own hardships, their own 
You know, what makes their heart sing? What makes their eyes light up? You know, what makes them really get and go that extra mile, no matter what's happening? What's that mojo for them? And people will light up when you get them to talk about what that looks like, whether it's their grandkids or surfing or traveling the world or praying or meditating or doing yoga, whatever it might be. People have the spiritual practice and spirituality can be all of those things. Uh, yeah. So if you allow a little bit of space in your conversation that goes deeper and more, you will find that your conversation shift about the things you're talking about before, during, and after a sales call or in a relationship you're building because of those. Yeah, and no, I th and I think that I think that's uh, that's so true, and and I hope people listening like take that away because I just think we need more of that. I think we need more of authentic expression done in a humble way, like you said, in a humble, non-threatening, non-confrontational way. And then uh, th what you said about curiosity, it, it's any, it's not just about being authentic yourself, it's, but it's also about having the curiosity to learn about somebody else and to learn about. Uh, you, the things you have in common, the things you don't have in common, the things that are surprising, all of that. I mean, it, it makes for, I mean, in a, if you take it in a sales situation, it makes the whole, that whole uh, process much more dynamic and rich and enjoyable as if you're not just, it's not a transaction, you're learning about each other, you're building a trust relationship. Absolutely. I think if I was in an Uber driver yesterday because my car was in the shop, my wife was busy, said, oh, don't worry about it, I'll just jump in an Uber. And I was not going mm -hmm. too far. And the guy in the Uber had these two little baby shoes hanging from his mirror. And it looked like maybe it was his newborn. And I said, oh, are those your baby shoes? He said, no, I actually don't have any kids. I said, oh, I'm curious. Why do you have those hanging from your mirror? Well, he had been a soccer player during high school and college, and they were little baby soccer shoes. And he said uh -huh. it was a reminder for him to always stay in his kid mode and to be childlike. And he was in school working to get his doctorate, uh, and he was wanting to be going into the holistic uh, healthcare space because he'd been in sports and you know nutrition and body and mind and stuff. And we started having a conversation about a mentor that I've had for years who's in that space. And I've now connected them in a conversation. And uh, the one guy that I connected was like 72 years old and this guy's like 26 or 27. And they're like having now dialogue about uh, this, this mentor who's 72, who's a, 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 an icon in his space, is excited that this 26 year old wants to learn about this practice. So that came out of curiosity and being intrigued by what someone else had just from a, one observation. Yeah, and I, lo I love that. It's a great place for us to to end up here. That that curiosity again. Uh, if it, it, we we need to rediscover the curiosity, because I think to some re to some degree we've lost a little bit of or it's been dampened down a bit or we become too self-obsessed or we become too gadget obsessed or too distracted or name you know we could name a thousand other things but i think you have to rediscover that curiosity if you're going to have really authentic connections with people absolutely 100 percent. well thanks for the pop that you're doing with the purveyor <laughs> of prosperity because you're doing that more and more every day so thanks for keeping those conversations alive out in the world yeah absolutely uh all of the all of steve's information will be below this video including a link to his book the iggy principles the power of inviting good in versus edging good out i think there's uh, so much of that is needed today so i really would encourage you to go check out the book uh but before we go steve do please tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do yeah uh i'm a a, a guy that climbed corporate america ladder uh 20 years being corporate america went from a manager to become a ceo of a berkshire hathaway company uh, in real estate, ran that for quite a few years. Then I uh, got out of corporate America, ran my own real estate company in San Diego for five years and title escrow mortgage services. And in the last five years, I've been very focused on consulting uh, in all different types of businesses, tech, marketing, entrepreneurship, healthcare, real estate. And I help people in only three key areas really, productivity, profit, and purpose. And we all wanna be more productive, we all wanna be more profitable, but purpose is then really what are you here to do on this planet? really what makes your heart and soul sing and how can I help people do more of that regardless of what their business practice is. So I'm a, I'm a purpose driven consultant and I've upgraded my title for myself. I gave myself a promotion this last <laughs> month when I did my book and I'm now calling myself a spiritual business activist. Uh, so, um, business activist. so how did the, how did these, how did the salary negotiations go with yourself? You know, it was a tough <laughs> negotiation, but I def definitely came out a little bit ahead on it, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, I love that. I, I mean, I do honestly think, uh, Steve, I think if there's one byproduct of the pandemic, um, obviously it's the tragedy has been great for those affected, those lost. But 
I think it has also given people a chance to think a little bit more, maybe reset a little bit more. I think the work you're doing around purpose and, and spirituality, I think that's extremely needed. And I think there's a, be a huge appetite for it right now, to be honest. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate the conversation and I appreciate your interest of having me on the show. And I hope your listeners took some value. And if I could be of any service to anybody, you can reach me uh, through the links below um, on my site and uh, I'll be glad to connect with anybody that would like to chat. All right. Listen, thanks again, Steve. My name is John Golden, Says Pop, online sales magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all soon. Thank you.